Reuters fact check. At, you know, it was, uh, I don't think Stephen Bannon said it, but I, I, I think I learned of it from Stephen Bannon or someone said Stephen Bannon says it. First time is an accident. Second time is a coincidence. Third time is enemy action. We're now dealing with purported fact checkers that are so dishonest and so disingenuous and so deceitful, it's not incompetence. It's not an accident. And I can only conclude that it's actual enemy action. What am I talking about? Viva, you're being hyperbolic. You're being crazy. You've, you've, you've changed, man, since you've gotten to the States. I have people saying that I've gotten angrier since I got to the States. Dude, I was accused of being angry in Canada for my Viva on the streets. That was what CTV W5 said. Look at this guy. He called, the, he called the, the, the Francois Legault a fascist dictator, an idiot, a buffoon who doesn't know what he's doing. Dude, it, it might be that we came to the States because I got angry with the government in Canada. Um, but if you think I'm being hyperbolic, if you think I'm exaggerating, if you think I'm being unfair to Reuters, listen to this shiat. It's not swearing, by the way, if you say it like Liam Gallagher. Shiat. I can say shiat. Uh, I can also say bia. No, I'll say shiat. Listen to this. Shit. Listen to this. Um, Reuters fact check. This is Reuters fact check. Blue check mark fact check. So people want to criticize Rasmussen and say Rasmussen is not reliable. I went and I didn't show it, but I actually pulled up the bias review for Rasmussen. They say it leans right, but it's generally reli very reliable. Reliable to very reliable. Reuters, I can tell you, anybody that says that they are reliable is biased. Crap. And I'm saying that not because it's saying something that I don't like. I'm saying that it's biased crap because the only way to come to this fact check requires willful blindness if it's your first time, bad work if it's your second time, and enemy action if it's your third time. Reuters fact check. We're seeing this. A study of 301 teens in Thailand found mild and temporary heart rhythm changes after a second dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine among one in six teenagers, not one in third as not one third as the social media posts claim. Oh, first of all, that's shocking already, Reuters. That's shocking. My voice cracked. That's shocking on its face. And this is the fact check. Oh, the ones who said it was one third, they're liars. It's misinformation. It's only one in six. Temporary heart rhythm changes after a second, oh, sorry, mild and temporary heart rhythm changes after a second dose. Set aside the fact that that fact check coming from Reuters should shock the conscience of every man, woman, and child out there. That should shock the conscience. But wait, there's more. Not one third, as the Post claims. That's the fact check. Let's go see the actual story, shall we? Let's go see the actual fact check. One thing to understand that's important to understand here is where did the one third come from? Because it, it is, I, I read through it. It is factually incorrect as some people were stating. Let's go here. Breaking. So this is the, this is the claim that they're fact checking. Uh, breaking. A new study has found cardiovascular adverse effects in around one third of teens following Pfizer vaccination and heart inflammation in one in 43. Okay. The one third cardiovascular adverse effects in one third of the teens following the Pfizer vaccination. That is actually not true. Cardiovascular. Now you have to, we, what did I do here? Ugh. Are we, what, 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 no, now you're not, now it's a different window. Sorry. That is not true. Why is that not true? And we'll get back to the rest of it later. Um, here we go. This is why it's not true. She, remember the claim is cardiovascular issues. One third. This is, this is where I think the misunderstanding comes from. Overall, these are all adverse effects. 50 of the 301 students reported fever, 
after the second vaccine, 35 reported headache. Add those two numbers together, you get 85. That's roughly one third of the 300 and change of the people tested. Those are not cardiovascular adverse effects, uh, fever and headache. Those are adverse effects, technically. So that's where, the, that's where I think the, the misstatement comes from. Does that make this doctor a propagandist liar? I don't know if it's her first, second, or third time making such misrepresentations or inaccurate summaries, but that's where I think the misunderstanding comes from. The one third was uh, referring to adverse effects, not cardiovascular adverse effects. But wait, we'll read the article here. Let me just see what's going on in the chat. Anything good? Is it out of control? Oh, let's just see if we're still green. Refresh. Still green. Let's go read the fact check because th the fact check is going to shock you with its dishonesty. And it's also going to shock you on the facts that it confirms. A study of 301 teens in Thailand found mild and temporary heart rhythm changes after a second dose of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine among one in six. That's the fact check confirming. That's fact check Reuters confirming we're all able to um, we're all able to identify qualifiers here. What it what it has found heart rhythm changes the mild and temporary are matters of opinion and unknowns. Temporary is unknown. It just means it went away for now. Mild is an opinion. It's an assessment. The fact the fact that is confirmed right here heart rhythm changes after a second dose in one in six teenagers of this one study. Oh, not one in third is the, oh, you got him. You got him, Reuters. The study also saw possible signs of heart inflammation in just, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually screwing Just. Can we appreciate that qualifier? That's called a minimizing quanti uh, qualifier. In just, in only, in a minimal, in a, just a small amount. Uh, I believe Kieran Moore did something similar, minimizing the ravaging damage. In just seven of those teens, seven of 301, what does that turn into? That's one in 43. Let's make sure about that so nobody calls me a liar. Just, just 301 divided by seven. One in four, just, just, just one in 43 boys. Uh, with heart inflammation. Oh, but it's just one, it's just one in 43. That's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to worry about until it's your kid. And confirmed myocarditis in one of the seven. So now we've got one in 300 with confirmed myocarditis. We've got seven just seven in 300 with heart inflammation. And we've got heart rhythm changes after the second dose in one in six. And they're fact checking this. And they're telling you nothing to worry about is misinformation that you've seen online. Social media users are circulating the study of post-vaccination heart effects in Thai teenagers with the claim that one third of the participants experienced heart effects. Yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. And that's why people, you should make sure that you know what you're saying when you say it so that you don't say something wrong that allows people to then divert, detract, and distract by focusing on what you said that was actually wrong, as opposed to the truth, nonetheless confirmed by this fact check, which is shocking, abhorrent, immoral, and some might say criminal. Some. I might be thinking it. And the suggestion that the results indicate a new danger level for children. New? Oh, here's an interesting qualifier. No, I don't care if it's new or old. Might be old. It's a danger level that people are saying. These posts are missing context. Oh, they're missing context. Give me the context. Just give me the context. Just please tell me how, tell the people who want to contextualize this atro atrocity what they need to know in order to contextualize it. Not within context, but with their own psyche and um, sense of morality. Let, let, let's give me the context to rationalize this atrocity. Let me hear it. Social media, the post missing context. We found the risk of these symptoms to be not as low as reported elsewhere, but in all cases, symptoms were mild, 
with full recovery in 14 days. Oh, but I thought, I thought, by the way, hold on a second. Go back to the, uh, go back to the fact check. Oh no, that was another one. I thought no one was injured. I thought there were no injuries. And yet in all cases, they recovered within 14 days. Oh yeah. I am no doctor, but I've, but I've interviewed a number of them. Heart inflammation. It's not argued. It's, it's not clear that it's something you can recover from within 14 days. A Twitter post shared more than 11,000 times contained a link to the preprint study. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Breaking. A new study has found cardiovascular adverse effects in around one third. No, it was not cardiovascular adverse effects. It was just adverse effects. And the cardiovascular was one in six. By the, by the Reuters fact check itself. We can skip through this because we've already done it. Yada, 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 yada. Let, let's go see what, what, they, what, what fa- Reuters is fact checking. Okay. Um, this, the, they note in their draft study released as a preprint for peer review, they likely saw higher rates of heart rhythm disturbance and signs of inflammation than in other studies because they did tests to detect mild changes. Oh, I'm sorry. They might have noticed higher results because they did tests to measure the changes. Oh, but they meant to to detect mild changes. Just pay attention to the qualifiers, people. Qualifiers are for liars. Ooh. Ooh. Someone remind me about that. Qualifiers are for liars. Just mild changes. They might have noticed a lot of results because they did tests. Oh, but there was only, they were just detecting mild changes. With no symptoms, uh, mild changes in participants with no symptoms who would not ordinarily have been screened. So what? Oh, I'm sorry. So they would not have ordinarily been screened to know that they had changes in their heart inflammation. So just write it off. Because they didn't know that they suffered the damage for whatever the reason. Maybe they thought it was gas. Maybe they thought it was acid reflux. The analysis included 301 aged 13 to 18 recruited from two Bangkok schools before receiving their second dose in November and December. The students were mostly male and none had abnormal symptoms after their first shot. Why did they put abnormal in quotes? Before receiving the second vaccine shot, each participant had a physical exam, a heart ultrasound called an EKG, echocardiogram, heart rhythm measurements, sorry, an echocardiogram, heart rhythm measurements by electrocardiogram, ECG, EKG, and blood tests that look for heart-related biomarkers, including troponin T and CK. This is a foreign language to me. Both markers of damage to heart muscle. They're looking for the markers, people. Don't worry. The only reason they found them is because they were testing for them. Otherwise, they would have never known. So the study should be disregarded. It's only found it because they were looking for it. They likely saw higher rates of rhythm and disturbances, in other words, because they did a test to detect for it. Yep, that's typically how science works, you buffoons at the Reuters. Before receiving the second vaccine shot, we got that. Okay. The exam and the test were repeated on days three and seven following the second vaccine shot. This sounds like a very, a very good way of doing a test. It sounds very methodical and very scientific, if I dare use that word. And on day 14, for some of the teenagers, the participants also kept symptom diaries throughout the study period and were able to contact or visit the study team doctors at any time to ask questions. Overall, listen to this. Overall, 50 of 301 students reported fever, 35 reported headache. Those are not the biggies. Among cardiovascular effects detected only by ECG, you only detect these when you actually do the test. Some people don't even know that they've suffered heart damage. Some people won't know now, but they might find out later. Some people will never know because they'll never do the ECG. They did the test. 54%, 54 participants, 18%, one in six, not one in three is social media race. Go to hell with that, Reuters. Go to hell with that nonsense and that distraction. One in six tested with an ECG had rapid heart rate or abnormal heart rhythm. That's just nothing. It's just, it's just nothing. Some, someone said this might be common regardless in teenagers. I don't know. 
just some of them, just 54 participants, roughly 18%, not the one in three, you, 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 you conspiracy theorists. It's only one in six. Of these, 39 reported symptoms, such as palpitations or chest pain. It was totally normal for 13 to 18-year-olds. 15 reported no symptoms at all. That doesn't prove what you think it proves, Reuters. They, they reported no symptoms at all, but had abnormal ECG test results after the second dose of Pfizer. That doesn't prove what you think it proves, Reuters, unless you're evil. Just look in the chat. Among the participants with abnormal ECG, which is 54, one in six, seven, all males also had elevated biomarkers of heart muscle injury or inflammation. I would argue inflammation is injury. So they had one in seven, oh, sorry, seven of them had elevated biomarkers of heart muscle injury. Seven of 301. Of these seven, four had reported chest discomfort or pain, but three had no symptoms other than biomarkers indicating injury to their hearts. Can you imagine how awful and disingenuous and dishonest and evil you have to be to say they had no symptoms except for biomarkers indicating muscle injury or inflammation to their heart? Oh, they didn't, but they didn't feel anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Of these seven, four reported chest discomfort or pain, but three had no symptoms at all other than elevated biomarkers indicating and confirming heart muscle injury or inflammation. But they didn't feel anything. It didn't hurt them. Now, all seven also had normal heart function and no sign of reduced pumping ability that can, be, that can signal heart failure. Oh, may, is, is it possible, Reuters, that it takes more than two weeks for those types of problems to result from muscle injury to the heart? That, that as a, a 13 to 18-year-old, otherwise healthy heart that's gone through injury, maybe reduced pumping ability doesn't happen within 14 days. Maybe. I'm just asking the questions. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a lawyer with a, a reasonably functional brain. One young man was admitted to the hospital intensive care unit only for observation, don't worry, people, of his arrhythmia over four days, treated with anti-inflammatory drugs and his symptoms resolved within days with no detectable damage to his heart, except for that little pesky EKG thingy thing you just mentioned over here. Liars. Oh, but I can't, can't get angry, people. With no detectable damage to his heart, according to the report. Of that patient, the only one formally diagnosed with myocarditis, the, the other ones only had biomarkers indicating injury to the heart. The study authors write, one patient with myocard myopericarditis in our study follow-up with da, 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 at five months after vaccination showed complete recovery with no scar. Although the study authors note that their paper that, that although the study authors Note in their paper that many of the survey participants had other underlying diseases, including asthma, allergies, blood, and thyroid disorders, or migraine. The study does not analyze whether these conditions were associated with the difference distances in risk for side effects. Hey, do, do, maybe that's a question you want to ask of, of children before blanket mandating this. The authors also note that they were unable to do baseline testing for kids prior to the first vaccine shot, which is a limitation of the study. They didn't get comments. The one in 301 myocarditis rate in the Thai study would translate roughly to 332 per 100,000. How many per thousand is that? Because I, I thought it was I thought it was one in 5,000. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying now it's one in 301? 332 per 100,000? What's the risk of COVID for these kids? Is it 332 per 100,000? No. In contrast, one retrospective study in Israel here found that the odds of myocarditis following vaccination were nearly twice as high after the second shot than after the first. The rates were also highest among young persons, 16 to 19. So I'm sorry, did, did, you, did you deny this? Did you contradict this or did you confirm it, Reuters? For anybody who's read this with a critical eye. Verdict, 
False. The study of teenagers in Thailand following the second COVID vaccination found that 18%, not one third, experienced any detectable cardiac defect. And that one in 301, not one in 43, had confirmed myocarditis. Oh my goodness, that is still shocking, egregious, over the top. And any politician who goes out there and mandates this and compels it on children is committing something of a crime. In my humble opinion, hashtag no defamation. A large proportion of purported abnormalities detected by testing were without symptoms. Oh, okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they wouldn't have otherwise known, but we can detect it with, with testing. And 100% of the teens in the study fully recovered after 14 days. For now. Can you believe that, people? Oh, it's only 1 in 300. It's not 1 in 18. 1 in 300. I, I thought people were flipping out when Dr. Kieran Moore said it was one in 5,000. And then a German study came out and said, no, it's one in 5,000 per dose or German authorities. I thought that was bad. One in 301. No, it's no biggie. It's temporary. See, see, see what that heart looks like in, in 50 years. That, that's the Reuters fact check, people. We're, liars. Evil liars. There's no other way to describe it. They are giving people the fodder they need to be deceived, and it's disgusting. And it's not an accident. It's a pattern. It's a behavior. It's intended. It's no longer one in 100,000 people. And now, now writing, it's only one in 301. That's only 332 per 100,000. People were freaking out when it was one in 5,000, and doctors were coming to the defense. Canadian subsidized doctors were coming to the defense of, of the government, saying Kieran Moore was way off when he said it was one in 5,000. He was way off. Um, German authorities confirmed it's one in 5,000 per dose. Just keep taking those doses, people. The jelly bean jar shrinks. Unbelievable. Okay, well, that's, um, that's the Reuters fact check.